I'm so happy here to be here. Amen. God cares about God cares about all of you. And God Amen. wants to do great things with you. Amen. And your pastor asked me to talk about the Holy Spirit. So that you can experience the Holy Spirit. So that you have a closer relationship with Him. And so that you also will carry the power of God to pray for people. To lead people to Christ. And help revive their spiritual life. Now, but before I talk about the Holy Spirit, I want to talk about the love of God. Then we know Amen. that God really loves us. Now, many people have this impression. They think God is too far away. And then when we pray, we think, God doesn't hear all the time. And many people feel they're not satisfying God's heart. So many people feel a distance between them and God. But actually, God is much closer than we think. Amen. Hallelujah. And God really cares for us. God really blesses us all the time. That He thinks about us all the time. So I hope, you know, that tonight we'll talk about how He is so real to us. Okay, now John 16, verse 8. Uh, and when he, the Holy Spirit, comes, he will reprove, reprove the world of sin and of, the, and of righteousness and of judgment. Uh, okay. What it says here is, when the Holy Spirit comes, He will tell us of our sins. And of God's righteousness, His holiness. And also God's judgment. Now, now when we look at this verse, we might not think about all the wonderful work of God. I'm going to explain it so that you understand more. Let me ask you, think about before you became a Christian. Did you before you be, believe in Jesus, did you have questions or things you want to say against God that you don't really believe in God? And God draws us to believe in Him for each person is a different way. Think about how you were brought to Jesus. How the Holy Spirit moves in your heart. Now, for me, my big question is, is there a God? In, in the past, I thought there was no God. But when I heard that there was really God, I want to know the proofs. And I asked the questions. 
and they answer my questions to a certain extent. But in the process of all this, first God led me to think about the meaning of life. Why do I live? And when I grow old and I die, is that the end of my life? And so I wonder, is there really a God? And then when the Christian answered me, I became very interested. And then God drew my heart toward him. And finally I realized God is real. I was very, I was very excited. And every morning when I wake up, I said there is really a God. God is real. Amen. And I can go to heaven one day. Amen. Now in this process, no, no, Murio, Murugo Rujendo, God first worked in my heart. Imana Anja Bukoro Murima Mutima Wange to think about the meaning of life. Nangira Buswiga, no, no, Buteche, as a Kuso and Rogubuzima. Why did I have to study so hard? I was a student at that time. I can bagir and Naru Munya Surito G, Arco Kuchi, Niva Jija, Kuchi, Nago Bakuiga Jan. Don't go too far. And then. And then he drew me to think about the, if there was a proofs of God. And then when I heard the proofs, God moves in my heart that I have the joy that there is really a God. Amen. And, and God moves me to find out more about the proofs of God. Now in a meeting that I will accept Jesus as my Savior, I remember how I was moved to raise my hand when the pastor asked who wanted to believe in Jesus. But I was afraid to raise my hand. When I finally raised my hand, I felt a freedom and a joy and bright light. And after that, I noticed that my heart was drawn to God. Now, your experience might be very different. <laughs> Have you noticed how God worked in your life in different ways to bring you to Jesus? That he would speak to you a number of times and then he used Christians to bring you to Jesus. How many of you can remember how you were brought to Jesus, the process, how God works in your heart? Can you raise your hand? How many of you can remember the process how God spoke to you in your heart to draw you to him? Or it could be through a pastor or someone else who visits you or pray for you. At first, we, we were not, might not be very interested. But later, God moves in your heart that you became more and more interested. Now, you think about the process. Each person has a story. If you notice how the Holy Spirit moves in your heart, and then 
you can remember, can you raise your hand again? No, pay attention. Pay attention to remember what God has done in your heart and raise, raise your hand. Can you raise your hand? Okay. All, all those who have this experience, okay? Now, very good. So many of you remember the process. Did you see God's love in the process? At first you were not interested. But God used the right way to draw you to him. And to, Amen. And to help us to be convicted of our sins. And of judgment so that we believe in Jesus. And then after we became a Christian, I noticed I became very sensitive to my sins. Mm -hmm. In the past, when I told lies, I didn't feel bad about it. <laughs> but after I became a Christian, I felt very bad about it. When I have anger, frustration with people, or have lust, in my heart I felt conviction. Do you have that experience? Mm. Yes. Now, let me ask you this question. Do you usually obey God right away when he moves you to repent? Let me ask you this question. How many times have you rejected God before you obeyed him? Let me tell you, I can remember I have rejected him many times before I obey him. But now, after I experience the Holy Spirit, Amen. I want to treasure the love of God. I want to treasure the blessings of God. And our lives are very special. And God has used me to bring many people to revival. So I don't want any sin to destroy God's plan. But I remember in the past, I have sinned many times. I'm not saying I don't sin anymore now. But whenever there are sinful thoughts in my heart, immediately now I say no to it. But in the past, many times I stay in the sin. And I said to myself, I'll repent later. And I'll ask God to forgive me. And I've repeated many sins many times. But God did not give up on me. He continued moving my heart. Amen. Amen. I, I become more and more guilty when I felt, you know, when I thought about my sin in the past. <coughs> Finally, I said, I don't want to sin anymore. I don't want to be controlled by sin. It makes me feel guilty. What I'm saying is, God was, is very patient with each one of us. Let, let me ask you, if you have a friend and you invite him and say, let's have some time to talk together and then he says, no, I don't want to talk to you. And then you say, I want to you know, do something with you 
No, no, come with your car. You want to go to And he says, No, I don't want to do anything with you. Let me ask you, if he rejected you many times, do you still ask him? No. Do you still ask him? No. no. If he rejects you ten times, will you still, do you still invite him? No. no. But let me ask you, have you rejected God more than ten times? Oh, Much more than ten times, right? Yeah. Let me tell you, an average Christian might reject God maybe hundreds of times every week. And counted together, it could be thousands and tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands times. If you be very hungry, they saw a cuba in Muge issue, if you whom be nibby whom be nibby whom. Many times we say, No, I don't want to pray when God moves us to pray. Harijimani could get on go to Jebu saying, Look of a boy at Rabjans and man. And God wants us to, you know, to give up our sin and say, I, I, I'll sin and ask you to forgive me later. Let me ask you, have you, have this happened to you? That we have rejected God many times. Mm -hmm. But have you noticed how God keeps working in your heart? That he moves you to repent. And then when you repent, you feel free. I'm saying, compared to human, we will reject someone if he rejects us ten times. But we reject God hundreds of thousand times. But God continues to move in our heart. Now God is the King of Kings. Mm -hmm. The Lord of Lords. Yeah. The Lord of the Universe. Now if you appear before a king, and the king tells you to do something, and you say, no, I don't want to do it. What will happen to you? A king might kill you, right? But the king of kings continue moving your heart yeah. to draw you to him. Even when you are not willing, he does not give up on you. Mm. And he continue to move to give you peace and love and joy. Mm. Now when we come to church, we praise God and we feel joyful. Mm. Do you feel joyful and peaceful when you praise God? Mm. It is because God is blessing you. Mm. Because God is full of joy and love. So when you praise God, His joy and love will come to you. Now look at my hand. This is one Sunday and this is another Sunday. And then on this Sunday you go to church and worship Him. And God's presence comes to you. But in between that two Sundays, many times we refuse to pray. We're lazy to pray and read the Bible. We are lazy to tell people about Jesus. And we get angry with our spouse and children. And how many times 
In between the two Sundays, and God keep moving in your heart, Hallelujah. and we still disobey Him, Amen. but when we come to church again and praise God, Amen. God doesn't say, Amen. You have been rejecting me this whole week. Amen. I'm, I'm not going to give you any joy and love today. You deserve my punishment. Let me, Let me ask you, does God treat you like that? Even when we have rejected him many times between the Sundays, let me ask you, have you been angry this week? Last week, have you been angry with someone last week? Or frustrated with someone? And God moves you not to be angry and frustrated? And then we might say, not with him. He's so terrible. I'm frustrated with him. But in between these weeks, we have been like that. But anytime we praise God, His joy and love comes again. <clears throat> Isn't God full of love and patience and kindness? Isn't he full of love and patience with us? Oh, yeah. So from this verse in John 16 verse 8, we just read just now. When the Holy Spirit comes, he will convict us of our sin and of righteousness and of judgment. And it shows how patience, patient God is with us. Now many people, when even when they think about it, they don't really, you know, appreciate God. But when I think of God's love, Especially after I experience the Holy Spirit. When the evangelist Carlos Anaconia from Argentina came to Hong Kong. And he laid, Hong Kong, and he laid hand on me. And the moment he touched me, I felt great power like electricity enter my whole body. And then the love of God filled me very powerfully. And immediately I, I was touched by the love of God. And I cried for a long time. And I said, God, I didn't know that I can experience your love like that. I did not know that I can have, can have such a close relationship with you. I did not realize that your love can come to me so powerfully. And I said, God, I want to keep that relationship. So after that, I spent long hours praying to him. And then after a period of time, every time I think of Jesus, when I think of Jesus, hallelujah, praise the Lord. His, his joy would come immediately. <laughs> like even now, whenever you see me laughing when I pray, it's, it's when I think about Jesus, His love will throw through me. 
Mm. And his power would go through my whole body. I can feel his love and joy. <laughs> and I can feel freedom. Hallelujah! And when I pray for people, many people experience his love and joy and peace. Now you can go online on YouTube and look for Pastor Yip. YIP. And then you can write English because I have many messages in, in Chinese, but they're English. You look for English. And then you see many of my preachings, and also many people experience the love, a joy, and a transformation and healing. And said, God, you're so wonderful. Your love can transform my life and the lives of many people. And that we can be so close to God. And also, I pray for peace. Some people, they saw Jesus in heaven. And all, kind of, all kinds of wonderful experiences. And I said, Lord, I'm so blessed to enter your supernatural realm. And then I say, God, you're so full of love. And I began to see the love of God in many, many Bible verses. When I thought about how God works in our lives. Like just now when I talk about how God moves in the heart to convict us of our sin. Because sins are destructive. Let me ask you, when somebody is angry with you, does it does it harm the relationship? Does it harm the relationship? Does it hurt the relationship? Because all sins destroys. And God is holy. So he hates sins. So he wants to cleanse our lives from all sins. And he's very patient. Let me tell you, God hastens to a degree. Now, I don't know about the, the toilets here in this country. I have gone to many countries. The toilets are very smelly. <laughs> Uh, when you go to the toilets like that, do you want to come out quickly? Mm. Let me ask you, if you have no place to live, do you want to live in a toilet? <laughs> we will hate the smell. God hates sin like that. Mm. But how about the sinners? Now God loves the sinner. But this sinner is full of sin. God hates sin like much more than we hate the bad smell in the toilets. Now God loves, loves us. But when he looks at when he looks at our sins, he said, wow, this is smelly. It's bad. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
But he still loves us. Like the prodigal son when he comes home. He has been feeding pigs. And, and he has been walking a long distance. What is the shape of his clothing? Is he clean? Was he clean? He will look terrible, right? And his body will be full of bad smell. But when he comes home, when the father saw him, the father was very happy and he ran up to him and immediately he smelled the bad smell. But the father did not turn back. Uh -huh. He hugged him. Uh -huh. Have you ever hugged a beggar on the street? Do you have beggars here in yeah. this country? Yeah. Do you hug a homeless person? They are, they are here. Oh, they are here? Yes. Do you hug a homeless person? When you come close, can you smell something? Very bad smell, right? Now the father smelled the bad smell. The Bible didn't say that, but you can imagine that the father would have smelled the bad smell. But he did not hug like this. He did not hug like this. <laughs> he hugged and kissed. Can you kiss a dirty, dirty man? Now this shows the love of God. God hates, God hates our sin like we hate the bad smell of toilets. But God shuts his smell so he can come to us and bless us. Now when the Holy Spirit enters your heart, does he see a clean heart, a holy heart? Or does he see all kinds of sin? Imagine you are the Holy Spirit. You come in the heart of someone. Wow, it's full of sins. It's bad smell. But the Holy Spirit continues to move in our heart. Not just for one day. For years, for decades. Isn't that wonderful love? Let me ask you, how many people here have been changed greatly by God? If you say, well, from the time I believe in Jesus from to now, I've changed a lot. Can you raise your hand? How many of you have changed a lot since you became a Christian? Thank God. Every one of you raise your hand. Thank God. Thank God. I'm asking you this question. What has God done in your lives in order to bring this change? Has He moved in your heart many, many times so that you can change like that? Mm -hmm. Now can you have more joy and peace and love in God? Isn't that wonderful love? Can you say to God, can you say to God now, follow me what I'm going to say? Can you say to God? 
I have sinned against you. Say it after him. I've sinned against you so many times. Mana nagu nagu tumuye okensi chani. I've rejected you so many times. Narakuya kanye kensi chani. Narakuya kanye kensi chani. But you never rejected me. Ariko ni wije zusiga. Ariko ni wije zendeka. And you have worked in my heart so many times. Kandi wajende re muti mo wanje kensi. Kandi wajende re muti mo wanje kensi. Even when I rejected you. You have really loved me. I appreciate your great love. How wonderful is your love. Begu kunu rukundo rwa ruhamba e. Begu kunu rukundo rwa. How wonderful. Begu kunu ruhamba e. It's your great love, Lord. Rukundo rwa rukume chani. Rukundo rwa. I appreciate your love. Nishi mi rukundo rwa e. Nishi mi rukundo. I want to love you. Dagu kunda. Dagu kunda. I want to love you. Nasha kugu kunda. There is no love like that on earth. Na rukundo muri rwa e kuisi. Na rukundo. There is no one like that in on earth. Urgo rukundo na handi waruona ni kuzimu ni waruona yo. Rukundo na handi waruona ni kuzimu ni ruwa yo. Now let me ask you, put your hand down now. No, no, manu la mawa kwa ya nyumba wazi. Can you really say to God, wow, God, you're so wonderful. Ushora kufigiri manu mbe, manu mbe kukunu, uri ngiza chani. Your love is so great. Urukundo rukwa irura hambaye. Let me tell you, every day I live in the love of God. Jere kamba mgire, ili hevi jose ni vera murukundo rugu imani. I enjoy his great love. Ni mbese uranshi misha chani murukundo rugu imani. When I experience his joy, I said, Yor ni moku jenda murukundo ndavuga ni. Could it be just from my mind? I say, mana, jara li turuka mugu enje vga enje. And I said, okay, don't think about joy. Just think about God. Just think about Jesus. Oh, te chere za kuri yesu chani. See, I can see if I can experience his joy. No, no, Harewa, consola kujendra muru. So I just thought about Jesus. Mujishi, mujishi, na kuri chira Yesu. And a joy comes again. No, no, mune zero kanza ho. So I know God is a joyful God. Iko ma nga menya kima na di ma na yivishi manu mune zero. And God is a loving God. Kandi ma na di ma nzima. Now there are many Bible verses about the love of God. Uravi ziko hari mirongo mnyishi muri muri vuga kurukundo kima na chani. So next time when you read John 16 verse 8 and think about how the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin and righteousness and judgment and you say God you are so wonderful. Now this next verse Zephaniah 3.17 now the second part, the second part. He will take great, great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. What it says is that he take great, great delight in you. He really likes you. Yomana ira kuishimira ira wukunda mubyukuri. Let me ask you, how many people in this world really like you? Dekamba unwaze ni na abanu banga eva wukunda wa kuishimira. When you see someone who likes you, you bonyo mungu wukunda. You can usually tell by the the look on the eyes. Yeye ushara kujilgira umurevi mumas. Now some of the people I've helped so much in the past. And they really appreciate my help to their lives. When they see me, this is how they look. They will look very happy. They will wave at me. And I will, you know, they will make sure that I will see them when they come. And I can see that they are very happy with me. Let me tell you this. When God sees you, when you come to Him, He's very happy looking at you. <laughs> because this is what the Bible says. Now how do we know that he is really happy to see us? You notice when you praise God, 
When you praise God, you feel joy coming to you. <laughs> This joy came from the presence of God. Because God is a happy God, especially when you repent, and when you love God, and obey God, when we repent, what will happen to heaven? The whole heaven rejoices. God and all the angels and all the saints are happy. Wow, so happy. <laughs> so anytime you come to God and say, Lord, I offended you so many times. I've disobeyed you so many times. <laughs> Immediately the whole heaven, God and the angels and the saints are full of joy. So I encourage you when you read the Bible, always look into the nature of God shown in the Bible verse. Now next week I'll explain that more. That God takes great delight in us. It shows God's nature that He is a happy God. He's also very happy when we come to Him. So that when we know God's nature is like that, you have full confidence to come to God. Now let me ask you, some of you have children or grandchildren, right? Some of you. When your children are small, or when your grandchildren are small, and then when they come to your house or you go to their home and visit them, what would the little your child or your grandchildren respond to you? How would they respond to you? They would smile. They run to you. They hug you. Do you feel happy? Mm. Let me tell you. God is like that. Mm. And I want to tell you that too. God created dogs like that too. Dogs, dogs. You know, dogs always greet people with excitement. Mm. <laughs> Even dogs don't smile. <laughs> But they are so excited, so happy. <laughs> no other animals are like dogs. <laughs> God puts his nature of joy and happiness to see people in dogs. Yeah. So when you pray, don't think that God is like this. Don't think that God said to you, you don't pray long enough. God is always very happy. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And he quiets us with his love. That's the second part. Like your baby when your baby cries. What do you do? You soothe the baby, you move the baby. You kiss your baby. Whatever, whatever way you do can do. Quiet, quiet him with your love. How many times when we were unhappy and burdened? And then we come to God. Lord, I'm burdened. I'm unhappy. 
And then we come to God. And then we can experience His peace and joy and love. Now, if you just praise God and love God, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. I love you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Does his peace soothe you? Does his, Does his love soothe you? <laughs> so, when you think about God, I hope you think of the most loving mother. Oh, trying to quiet you with his love. <laughs> and then the last part says in the verse, he rejoice over us with singing. He will sing over us. I love you, I love you, I love you. <laughs> that God will rejoice over us with singing. Amen. Let me tell you, the more I know about God, the more I fall in love with him. There is no one like God. There is none like Him. Hallelujah! I hope you all like God so much. You know, let me ask you, even your husband and your wife, does, do they love you so much? Do they love you so much, your husband and wife? It's very hard, right? Very hard to have so much love. Now let me show you the picture of my wife. Because I really love God. Mm -hmm. I want to do you know my best in every area of my life. Now I carry her pictures everywhere. It's, I know it's hard for you to see, you know, I just show you here. And a moment in this cell phone. And this cell phone here, I'm doing live broadcast. Now, my wife really loves me a lot. So, when we go to sleep, now she has to wake up very early every morning to go to work. You know, very often I find her staring at me when, <laughs> when we were about to sleep. Now that's her, our picture. I said, close your eyes and sleep. You have to wake up early. And then she said, let me look at you a little longer. Now she really is a wonderful wife. <laughs> I really thank God for that. But I want to tell you, her love for me, it's much, much smaller than the love of God for me. Hallelujah. So I hope that you all really believe that 
icyama rwose mukizera iryo mukamenya ko izindi nkundo mujya mwibwira ni gitonyanga mu nyanja ariko rw'Imana bavuta byose amen hallelujah that the love of god is beyond imagination urukundo rw'Imana rurenze bipimo nibyo mwatekereza that there is nothing like that on earth here at all hawa kwisi wazengurukisi wajya ni kuzimu nahandi hose nta wabona urukundo nk'urw'Imana now let me tell you five areas we can see God's love. First area in nature. Do you like to eat? Do you like to eat? Do you like the taste of fruits and different kind of food? Mm. You know, God is the greatest chef. <laughs> He prepared the best food for us. <laughs> so that we can enjoy life. <laughs> now God can make food like dirt, you know. Earthworm, the only food they have for earthworm is the dirt. Now God can make human only eat dirt. God can make human in a way that we only eat dirt. God can make us that's, like that. You mean that is I mean, he can do it like this, but he doesn't do it like that. But he can create it. But he did not create us like that. He created us that we have taste. Mm. That we know what is good food. And he created different kinds of food. That you can enjoy. Now, do you like to see flowers and butterflies and birds? Mm. Do you like to see those? Mm. Do you? Do you say that it's time? It's time? Oh, it's time. Okay. 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 Now, what I want to say is, you can see God's love in nature. You can see God's love in the Bible. And you can see God's love in Jesus dying on the cross. Mm -hmm. We can see God's love when we pray and we can experience His peace and joy and love. And we can experience God's love when we are in difficulties and we ask for God's help. And I hope we all really appreciate God. Uh, let me tell you who can who can experience the Holy Spirit powerfully. It's when you really appreciate God's love. Mm -hmm. Now, when many people pray, they pray like this, God, you're far away. Where are you? Please come to help. Now, I don't pray like this. Every time I pray, I say, God, you're here blessing me. You're happy to bless me. You want to bless me. So when I pray, I know God is right here to bless me. I hope you have this faith. God wants to bless you. Now right now I'm going to demonstrate by praying for any two persons who hunger for God. You hunger for God, you come forward, I'll pray for you. And tomorrow I'll teach more about the Holy Spirit. Tonight I just teach a little bit about the love of God. So any two persons you can come forward, you hunger, the condition is you hunger for God. I want to experience the Holy Spirit. I want to experience his love. I want to change, I want to be changed by him. 
Ndashaka ko uhindurwa niyo mana. Okay. So I demonstrate to pray for you. Any two persons? Everyone close eyes. When you hunger for God, God's presence will come to you. Oh, hallelujah. That Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus. What do they say in this language? Jesus. Jesus, yes. 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 Yes, 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 What you experience just now? Oh, 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 uh, can you share? Uh, whoever can talk first. But you can tell from the expression they experience something. Now I hope you all hunger for God. You cry to Jesus. Jesus, I want you. Yes, I need you. I didn't know that you love me so much. I didn't know your love is so real. I need you. I want you. I depend on you. You love me so much. You want to bless my life. Everyone cried to God. Oh. Hallelujah. Now, whoever wants me to pray for you, please step forward to a place that I can pray for you. Come up here. Okay, now I'm going to conclude with a prayer. Anyone who wants to leave can leave, but if you want to stay and pray, I'll pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you for your great love. God is full of love. God is full of mercy. God is full of patience. God has loved us so much. We don't deserve that love. But your love is high as a heaven. I thank you for your great love. Please forgive our sins. We have not loved you much. We have not obeyed you. Please forgive our sins. And wash us clean with the blood of Jesus. And give us eternal life. 
and bless our whole life and change our whole life, we, we need the Holy Spirit to help us in all difficult times. We need you, O oh Lord. We hunger for you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, so stay where you are. I'm going to pray for you. And then whenever, whoever is ready, you can share. Uh, they can share and also when I pray for you, you can share to the camera. It will encourage many people to see how real God's love is. Okay, so I'm going to go through everyone. And I want to say this. You don't just experience God here. <coughs> Wherever you go, always love God. At your home, spend more time loving God. When you are on the street, when you are cooking, you keep praying to God. Thank you for your love. You love me a lot. I want to love you more too. So always declare the love of God. And always love God. So everyone do that all the time. By the time when I leave next week, back to Hong Kong, you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit to a large extent. But if you just come and expect you to be changed just here, <coughs> and when you go home and you don't pray, it's not going to the change is not going to stay in your life. So spend long time loving God. Because God is a loving God. Okay. So whoever can, can come to Washington for the video taking and sharing. And, and, and share loudly to everyone. It's best that we have a catcher for me, a woman and a man. So uh, a woman to stand behind a woman. Now, if she's ready, she can share. Let's have relax. Now let me tell you, you don't have to fall down to experience God. Some people don't fall down, some people fall down. It's okay. The main thing is that you experience is peace, the burdens go away. And you can experience comfort all over your body too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Now, do not be afraid of falling down because the Bible does talk about that too. When John saw the glorified Jesus in Revelation 1.17, he fell down under the power of God. Oh. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Jesus.